You know, we talk about the history associated with police officers being really compassionate to individuals who commit, well, let's just say mass murder um, or other violent offenses. If they happen to be white, in particular, if the individual who did the crime is a white male. That is not hyperbole, we have the facts. Let's put the first picture up for mass here. I'm going to give you a breakdown that is simply 100% required, all right? There's a history, we'll keep that picture up. There's a history of violent white suspect being coddled by police officers. Bruce C.T. Wright of News One did an extensive breakdown of the history of violent white individuals who were taken into custody, custody with loving care by the police, not professionalism. Loving care, as if they endorse the action. Professionalism would have been fine. Wright cited nearly 40 plus examples of this occurring in the column. There's a lot there. Um, I'm going to go to uh, Florida. Uh, Nicholas Arnold Schock, a self described Trump supporting white supremacist with a huge swastika tattoo on his chest caused a racist disruption at a restaurant, threatened to sexual assault one woman, and then physically attacked another. When the police finally arrived, there was no brutality to be seen, no reckless shoving of the suspect's head into a squad car. Instead, there was some jovial joking taking place as the suspect was carefully eased into the back of the police cruiser. In another stunning example, an armed white male who allegedly shot and injured a police officer after barricading himself in a home during a contentious standoff with law enforcement managed to be peacefully arrested in North Hollywood, California. That was in June. Police responded to a reported active shooting and somehow took the armed man into custody without resorting to without resorting to the lethal force we see officers use so many times with unarmed black people. And then we have West Hollywood. This came nearly two weeks after Pity, um, P, uh, Peter, excuse me, Man Fredonia, a, sus, a suspected double murderer, who was also accused of a range of other violent crimes, was safely taken into custody without police resorting into a violent act, let alone lethal force. Peter was arrested in Maryland six days after he allegedly killed a 62 year old man with a machete, held another man hostage, stole the hostage's gun, vehicle, multiple guns, killed a former classmate, kidnapped a former classmate's girlfriend in her car in Connecticut. What about these two guys? Remember them? The ones who killed a young black male for existing inside of their community. They killed Ahmaud Arbery, father son duo Gregory and Travis McMichael, who are on video shooting the young jogger. They were gently handled during their arrest, so much so that the DA covered it up. The officers who responded were told not to arrest either one of them, even though one officer said he wanted to was told to stand down, that DA has been charged with crimes. Benjamin Murdy of Hartford County, Maryland fired nearly 200 rounds from a rifle and a handgun while police never fired a single shot back at him. That's according to WMAR Baltimore. After a half an hour, an hour and a half, excuse me, standoff with Hartford County police, the Maryland man eventually called 911, turned himself in. Despite the evident threat, Murdy posed to the arresting officers a threat that resulted has resulted in the killing of many black suspects. Murdy, who was taken into custody, peacefully was later charged. What about Serena Probus, Florida woman? Was accused of two separate violent felonies, one of which the 20-year-old admitted to being, quote, 
too high on cocaine to remember. The Tampa Bay Times reported, despite the clear threat to the safety of the arresting officers, a threat the police have quickly killed black suspects over even when the threat wasn't real. Probus was somehow able to be peacefully taken into custody. And as a result, smiled proudly in the mugshot. Was very happy that everything worked out for her. Jerry Kelly decided the best reaction to four black teenagers who knocked on her door while fundraising for their high school was to pull a gun on them and keep her firearm aimed at them until the police arrived. While the obviously racist episode that unfolded in Arkansas resulted in her being arrested, and Kelly being arrested, excuse me. It took the Wine County or Wine Police Department, which arrived at the scene to see Kelly holding the boys at gunpoint while they were forced to lie on the ground five days before they figured out, you know, that's probably illegal what, what happened there with minors. Also consider the treatment received by Amber Geiger, the officer who literally went into somebody else's home, killed them during her trial after she was sentenced for going into the wrong home, fatally shooting a black male eating ice cream on his on his couch. The judge gets off the bench, hugs the convicted killer. The cop decides to do her hair at the trial. Robert Aaron Long was arrested for allegedly going on a deadly shooting spree at multiple Asian massage parlors in Metro Atlanta. I remember it well, leaving at least eight people dead, six of them Asian women. There was no motive for the shooting immediately announced. But the killings came as a report or multiple reports of anti-Asian violence were sweeping across the nation. Despite being a suspected mass murderer who led police on a car chase before he was arrested, Long still managed to be taken into custody without incident. How about this fella, Kyle Rittenhouse? Remember Kyle? The night. He shot at least three people, killed two during a protest against police shooting. The police shooting specifically of Mr. Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Prior to Rittenhouse's shooting spree, video footage showed a local law enforcement, a local law enforcement team seemingly consulting with the teenager who was too young to even legally own the AR-15 assault rifle. He was brandishing while speaking with the cops. You know the guy who bought him the rifle? Well, he got arrested for it. He got a criminal penalty for that. That could be why it took more than 12 hours to peacefully arrest the suspect who should have been considered armed and dangerous while he was actually armed and dangerous. And this one, this was in June 2015, nine churchgoers gunned down at the African Methodist Episcopal Church downtown Charleston, South Carolina, the killer Dylan Roof. He was treated so kindly by the police that after he was apprehended, they took him to Burger King before taking him to lock up. Now, there are many more examples. I just don't have enough show to give them all to you. But do you get the picture? No one is saying, that these individuals should have died in police custody. I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying individuals who have died in police custody or have died because police assumed that the black male was dangerous, but he was not. That the black male was armed, but there was no gun. That the black male who was simply present was a present threat. Those individuals died, black men and black women. Dead. So obviously, police officers are able to be more than professional. They can even be courteous without crime getting under their skin, unless you happen to be 
of a particular skin color. All right, sharing thoughts here. Well, it's illustrative that we are living in a country where we already know something to be true. If you are black and brown, you're not worth as much, you're not worthy of empathy, you oftentimes don't matter. It really is that simple. Yesterday, my daughter and I returned from international travel and we went through customs. And I watched a black person who was working in customs and in charge tell a white man, stop because he accessed an area that he should not have gone into. He kept going, he shouted something back at her and he waved her off. And I thought, well, when will police storm in and tase and take him out? You know, they'll have mm. on riot gear, it never happened. It, that, once they step in the courtroom, it's even worse, Dr. Ritchie. Remember Regina Chu and Kim yep. Potter's case? She had the nerve to quote Barack Obama. She cried and said, you gotta empathize with this officer. White woman tears, this is America today. This is America. Yep. Now that's that is for everyone who may question if there's unequal treatment. All right. Uh, big ups to News One and the uh, writer who did a remarkable job 